The ancient Greek Aristarchos of the island of Samos, the Greek they forgot to mention as the father of the heliocentric solar system model, Aristarchos of the island of Samos, 310 BC to about 230 BC. He was a Greek astronomer and mathematician born in Samos of the Aegean Sea. He is the first recorded person to propose a heliocentric model of the solar system, placing the sun and not the earth at the center of the known universe. His ideas on astronomy were not initially accepted and considered inferior to those of Aristotle and Ptolemy until they were successfully revived and developed by Copernicus some 2,000 years later. However, we know from various references that Aristarchus made written, uh, had written many, uh, another book in which he proposed the alternative hypothesis of the heliocentric model. Cleanthes, a contemporary of Aristarchus, believed that it was the duty of the Greeks to condemn Aristarchus of Samos on the charge of setting in motion the earth in the center of the universe and thus disturb the, the tranquility of the gods. He says, as you move the earth of the world and disturb the tranquility of the Olympian gods, you assume that the sky remains stationary and the earth turns on an inclined circle, while at the same time revolving around from its axis. The size of the moon, distance and size of the sun. He found that the moon and the sun are almost the same apparent size from earth and concluded that their diameters would be proportional to the, the distance from the Earth. And the rebirth of the Aristarchus theory. Stobius, in his collection on physics, writes, Arist Aristarchus, um, the uh, Hellenist, Plutarch on his work on the likes of the philosopher states, Aristarchus placed the sun after the plains and the Earth moves around the solar circle, and the Earth evolves according to an oblique circle if it is also rotated around its axis, and during these inclinations it shadows the disk. The only work of Aristarchus that has survived to this day, titled On the Sizes and Distances of the Sun and the Moon, On the Sizes and Distances of the Sun and the Moon, is based on a geocentric model. Archimedes wrote, King Galen, you know that the world is the name and most astronomers give to a sphere in the center of which is the Earth, and that the radius of this sphere is equal to the distance between the Sun and the Earth. This is the explanation given by astronomers. But Aristarchus wrote a book which contains certain propositions from which it is concluded that the real world is much larger. It's believed that the flat stars and the Sun are stationary, that the Earth moves around the Sun in a circular orbit, with the sun at its center. Even though the spheres, the sphere of the plain stars, which is at the same center as the sun, is so large that the circle around which the earth revolves is far from the plain stars as the center of the sphere is from the surface, Aristarchus means the following. Since we believe that the earth is, let's say, the center of the world, the relationship of the earth to what we call the world is equal to the relationship of the sphere which contains a circle on which the Earth is said to revolve towards the sphere of the plain stars. Hence, Aristarchus believes that the stars are infinitely distant from us, and he considers this to be the explanation of the absence of visible parallax, that is, the observed motion of the stars as the Earth moves around the Sun. In reality, the stars are much farther away than was assumed in ancient times, which explains the fact that stellar parallax is detectable only with telescopes, but it had been assumed that the geocentric model was a simpler and better explanation for the lack of parallax. The rejection of the heliocentric view was apparently quite strong, as indicated by the following text of Plutarch on the apparent face of the circle of the moon. Aristarchus observed the movement of the moon through the Earth's shadow during a lunar eclipse, he estimated that the diameter of the Earth was three times the diameter of the Moon. And using Eratosthenes' calculation that the circumference of the Earth was 42,000 kilometers, he deduced that the Moon has a circumference equal to 14,000 kilometers. 
Today, the moon is known to have a circumference approximately 10,916 kilometers. Aristarchus observed and argued that the sun, moon, and earth form almost a right angle at the time of the first or last quarter of the moon. He estimated the angle to be 87 degrees. Using correct geometry, but incorrect observational evidence, Aristarchus concluded that the sun was 20 times farther away than the moon in reality, is the sun is about 390 times farther away. So he concluded that the sun was 20 times the diameter of the moon, which is computationally logical and correct, but also wrong, since it's based on wrong data. But this estimate of his indicates that the sun is clearly larger than the Earth, which supports the heliocentric model that the sun is the center of our solar system. Aristarchus was the first to propose the currently accepted heliocentric theory and founded astronomy and logical thought, a view which, unfortunately, a portion of the international astronomical community, either justified by ignorance or even unjustifiably, does not seem to share at all. Unfortunately for the heliocentric theory, ardent supporters of the geocentric theory, also introduced by Samius uh, from uh, uh, Pythagoras, were scientists of the prestige of, the, of an Aristotle, a Hipparchus, or Ptolemy. Consequently, the revolutionary idea of Aristarchus could not be accepted. And it fell into oblivion without being completely forgotten until the Renaissance, when in 1543, about two millennia later, it was vindicated by the famous Polish astronomer Nicholas Copernicus. Although Copernicus simply brought the heliocentric theory out of obscurity, Thus repeating the ideas of Aristarchus, he is nevertheless regarded today as a prominent of the heliocentric theory, and the currently accepted heliocentric system is still internationally called Copernicus's and not Aristarchon, as it should be. The survival of the heliocentric theory, despite the, the polemics of its opponents, is due less to Copernicus and more to the overwhelming evidence of its correctness given from time to time by Galileo, Kepler, Newton, and others. So the question whether the work of Copernicus is original and what it's, is its value arises easily. In order to give a responsible answer to this question, one should take into account the difficulties of the age of Copernicus, during which the doctrines of Aristotle prevailed, with which no one was allowed to disagree. In addition, criticism of the Polish astronomer series began immediately and was particularly intense. Although Copernicus's contribution to the revival of the heliocentric theory is important, this is not enough for him to be recognized as the author of this theory. It's true that Copernicus knew the views of Aristarchus, and this is attested by surviving manuscript fragments of his treatise De Revolution Orbium Celestium, and in it, the paragraph referred to in Aristarchus's treatise appears to have been deleted and which paradoxically was not included in the printed version of his treatise presented in 1543. The fact of the deletion is characterized by some as plagiarism, while others considered the omission of reference to Aristarchus also in his theory as lack of courage or even cowardice by Copernicus. However, it should be emphasized that it is not absolutely certain whether the erasure should be contributed to Copernicus himself or to his editor, Given that the treatise was published after his death, it's also noteworthy that the Polish astronomer did not give his consent for the publication of his treatise for a whole decade, fearing the condemnation of the Roman Catholic Church. Finally, in 1543, a copy of the, his manuscript was published in Nuremberg, which was condemned in 1616 by the Church of Rome. Copernicus is therefore not the introducer, but simply the man who brought out of oblivion and spread the heliocentric theory, the authorship of which belongs exclusively to Aristarchus. Copernicus's contribution lies mainly in the fact that he introduced the geometric mechanism of Ptolemy's geocentric system into the heliocentric system of Aristarchus. But it's evident that since the real difficulty, namely the belief that the planets move smoothly in circular orbits could not be overcome, his whole effort was on the wrong track. For the restoration of the truth, but also for reasons of historical self-awareness, 
the widest possible information is required on the work of the great Greek astronomer Aristarchus as one of the leading figures in the world of Greek astronomers, mathematicians, and philosophers of antiquity. Archimedes, in his mathematical treatise Psamitis, writes, Aristarchus of Samos is supposed to be the is supposed to be because the planes of the stars and alien remain motionless while uh, uh, the earth revolves around the sun in a circular circumference, which is the middle of the road text. And this I've translated for you from a Greek article. Please uh, read your, uh, leave your comments and thank you for your support. Finally support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.